Strong Dads wants to thank Quality Auto Mart for joining us as a sponsor. Quality Auto Mart was born in 1985. They are owned and operated by Mark and Nancy Repke. Quality Auto Mart provides all the services, repairs, and maintenance for your vehicle's needs with a three-year auto parts and labor warranty. They offer complimentary vehicle safety inspection and estimates. Also, they offer a shuttle service and the fourth oil change is always on them. They are located at 7307 on State Road 46 in Batesville, Indiana. Make sure you give them a call at 812-934-2301. Welcome to Strong Dads. This is Merle Hutchinson being joined by Kyle Crawford. I almost, I almost called you something else. You called me, call me Linda since you just thought this was rock solid family radio here. <laughs> How you doing, man? I, I'm good. You know, Merle, I, I just I went up to Wilhelm Lumber a little bit ago. and Yeah, a little know, plug for Wilhelm Lumber. Wilhelm Lumber, yeah. Yep. And uh, the lady at the front, she just was singing your praises. And I hey, just, you gotta know I just chuckled and said, if you only knew. Oh. <laughs> if you only knew the Merle Hutchinson that I know. <laughs> oh, man. Heck no. Those folks at Wilhelm, they're, they're awesome. They're awesome. They are and legit. Good people. And. You know what? I'm just going to put a plug in for him. For any wood lumber supplies that you need, you know, and I'm not talking like from a lumber yard, like uh, with trusses and two by fours, but like authentic natural Mm, wood. If you're going to do a woodworking project, yeah, hardwoods, you got to go see Wilhelms because, and and they're really awesome about, um, just cutting to order what you need. Like yep. you're like, hey, I'm trying to do this certain project. Here's what I'm looking for. You're like, yeah, I'll, I'll go out and the is, pile and I'll find it. It is incredible what they have there. My goodness, just yeah. it's yeah. just like for someone like me, that's like paradise. I'm just looking like, holy yeah. cow. Yeah, good stuff. So, yeah. yeah, that's not one of our sponsors, but hey, maybe they will maybe be they now. Will be. Yeah, they're good people. <laughs> Anyways, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, just uh, moving along. Um, Wrapping up the last bit of my whole summer project today. Yeah. Uh, as you pulled in, there's concrete trucks and people yep. getting busy. So it's we had good. the very last part is now kind of uh, re-pouring some concrete. And uh, like hopefully it. that'll be done here in the next 24 hours. And Good deal. We'll be rocking and rolling. Good deal. So speaking of pouring concrete, oh what are we talking about today? Well, you know, we're, we're coming off of the, the back end of our, our series we did on different ways that Satan kind of attacks us and, mm. and kind of went through a little four-part series in that. And, uh, uh, you know, and then we had, had an awesome guest last week. So, uh, you know, for, for this show, we're going to talk about the value of work and what that looks like for us as men. Mm. And hopefully, you know, looking into our work to, you know, I, I think most men can relate to this idea of work and, and the fact that I think most men, you know, feel the need and the urge to actually work. Um, but, you know, it, it's one of those kind of when you, you get stuck in a little bit of rut and you, you maybe lose that sense of value in your work. So kind of going back to the roots of that and hopefully hopefully having a good conversation about it. Yeah, yeah, we'll get into some of that. I think it's uh, not only good talk, but some necessary talk in terms of what sort of directions we see some some mentalities are changing towards yep. work. And I don't think it's uh, really leading us in a very good direction. So we're going to talk a little bit about that stuff. But before we go, uh, let me thank Quality Auto Mart for being a sponsor of the Strong Dance podcast. I took that one because, you know, you <laughs> I, I butchered messed it every up time. a few times. <laughs> so welcome to uh, the Strong Dad podcast with uh, Mark and Nancy Repke. I just screwed that one all up, too. <laughs> Mark and Nancy, we're so sorry. Yeah, why, why do we keep fumbling over your ad? <laughs> Anyway, uh, we do want to thank those guys and just their uh, willingness to support the work that we do here in the message. So for any automotive need that you have, go see uh, the folks at Quality Auto Mart located outside of Batesville, Indiana. Good deal. Also, we would like to thank Casey's Outdoor Solutions. Thanks so much for being a sponsor for us. Um, check them out, all your outdoor needs, home decor. They got an incredible facility up on the, off the state line road. So check them out. Let them know we sent you up there. All right. Very good. So uh, let me talk for a second just about maybe some of the things that got you and I going on this conversation. Um, I have been having this conversation with guys uh, for a long time, but in particular right here at my own house. And that is um, the problem or the challenge of trying to find workers these Mm. days. Um, whether I'm talking about the guys who help do the roofing on my project, the decking, mm-hmm. um, the concrete, um, it doesn't seem to matter. Every trade that I had to call in, 
um, every owner of whoever the contractor was, we got into a conversation about, man, like I'm overwhelmed in my work because I don't have enough employees. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have people to get the job done. Yeah. And to the point where, you know, if it could be called epidemic, it is epidemic level. It mm. is, it's just beyond terrible. Yeah. Um, the guys who are up doing some concrete work for me right now, um, he, you know, he said, I could have 20 jobs going right now. And then there's only three guys at my place working, but he's like, these are the only three guys that showed up today. Wow. So he said, this is, this is what I've got. Mm -hmm. I got three guys and I got 20 jobs waiting that I could have started today. Mm. Um, the people are itching. They're in line. Wow. And, uh, and you know, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous. It's, isn't it, isn't it crazy though? Just to think, I mean, honestly, the vast majority of workers today are fit in our two generations, right? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and your, your generation more like the ones who probably own the businesses, own the trades, own, mm -hmm. own, own those companies. And my generations are vast majority of the laborers, the, the line people that are actually, you know, right. showing up every day to work. I mean, we're talking one generation and there's a huge mm. lapse and gap in this ability to want to show up and actually do the work. Yeah. And it's so hard because for someone like me who I find a great deal of value in my work, it's hard for me to put myself in the shoes of other people that are in my generation that are not willing to do that. And not. And again, very generalized statement. There are a lot of people in my generation that do want to work and are willing to work. Mm. But man, it just seems like we're few and far between. And I don't know where that, you know, where, where we're missing, you know, mm. the, the kind of missing the mark. Yeah, exactly. I think it's part of the conversation today because I think somehow um, we have we have lost the idea of the value of work. Mm. Like, well, you know, if the value of work is a paycheck and I can find a way to replace the paycheck part of it, then I really don't need to work. And so yeah. if I can find a way to cheat that, whether it's a, a welfare system, government handout, uh, win the lottery, whatever it is, if I can find a way to cheat the value in terms of money, then I, the rest of it is meaningless. Yeah. And I, I think, what we're seeing is the epidemic is is way beyond a work shortage, but the epidemic is now an entire generation. This generation has lost um, into the millions now due to drug overdose, mm -hmm. which you have personally been involved with on yep. your side of a first responder. Yep. Um, mass or uh, uh, um, deaths due to shootings mm. um, and and crime, and so the incarceration rate rate is at an all time high. And so what we're seeing, I think, is people have found ways to shortcut work by finding other ways to get money. I can sell drugs, w welfare, whatever. And they have lost their way in life, mm. okay? And I think that's what we're gonna get into a little bit today that uh, we have to stop associating work with just a paycheck. Because mm -hmm. if it's just a paycheck, because all I have to do is somehow find a way to replace the paycheck part of that. Yeah. And then everything else in life will be great, which is, you know, goes back to the whole idea. Right now, as we're recording this, the um, the super lotto or Powerball is now at a billion dollars. I guess wow. it's the second highest lottery in the history of that lottery. And, you know, the, the, the proof is in the pudding. Lottery winners are a very unhappy group of people. Yeah. And I know that sounds, oh, yeah, well, give me a chance and let me <laughs> right, see right. how unhappy I can be. Again, I just look at the, the number of divorces and, and suicides, and, and people tell you, like, it was probably one of the worst things that ever happened to me. Mm -hmm. um, I think it takes a very disciplined person in life to yeah. be able to take that much money on and not lose who you are. Mm. You know, as this idea of the value, you know, finding value in our work, as we, you know, kind of get into this conversation, it reminded me, um, I believe, and, and any of you guys can fact check me out there, I believe it's Mark Twain that said the two most important days in the life of a man are the day he was born and the day he figures out why. Mm. And I think, it, man, it's just, it's, it's, it is because, man, I, I believe at my core that I was made to be a fireman. I mm. really do. I believe that God put me on this earth to be a fireman. I love what I do. I find a great deal of value and a great deal of, of, of like purpose in what I do. And man, I, 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 it makes getting up and going to work a lot easier. And again, maybe a generalized statement. I think part of, part of this conversation when it comes to finding value is, is, is this idea that, man, there's just a missing 
purpose and why men are showing up to work. I think for the most part, it's like when you don't have that true value in your work is because there's no purpose behind mm. why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah, man, this stems back to so much of the conversations that we've had in the past with the selfish nature that we have. If my purpose is to make me happy, mm. if my purpose is to please me, to be comfortable then I will eventually um, be lacking in purpose. In other yeah. words, it just won't fulfill me. Yeah. And and then I'll have to start going to the next thing that provides a level of excitement. And that's where all of the shortcuts come in of, you know, drugs, alcohol, sex, everything else like that. So I think you're right, understanding the, the purpose. Um, but I, I also think that it's important that you have to connect your purpose to God. Mm. Yep. You know, if I just say, well, I just, I'm a great firefighter and that's what makes me excited mm -hmm. to get up to go to work, you still haven't necessarily connected it to God. Yeah. And I think that if, if I only connect, because eventually your body's not going to be able to do that. Right. right. I, I mean, just look at me. <laughs> right. <laughs> eventually you're, you're going to sort of be wore down mm -hmm. and you're going to lose that, some of the, what you're good at right now. And so you're going to have to redefine your purpose or re-understand it. And I think understanding that as it connects to God starts to make it a little bit easier. So like our work first has to have its attachment to God. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Oh, absolutely. You know, so how would I attach it to God? So, you know, what, what does that mean? Well, I think the whole idea here is um, work is teaching us service. Mm. service to others yeah and so at your core you are serving mm. and the very first thing that we find that people who are depressed and and not functioning well they they start to lose their desire or ability to know who they're serving and why they're serving mm. and they start to become self-serving yeah Right. Uh, so it's it's known that people who suffer from depression and anxiety, while they're in the depths of that, they have a higher level of narcissistic thoughts. In other words, they can't think about you, what's going on in your life, because right. they can only think about their, <clears throat> themselves. Like, uh, are they doing what they want to do? Are they happy? What's going on with my body? What's going on, you know, in my life? And they forget to think that there might be other people out in this world. Mm. So I think it's really important that our our first understanding is okay, we are called to serve others. Yeah. And that's where work starts. Yep. Yeah, I like it. So let's, uh, you know, you, you have found a, an article, I think you really touched on some of the stuff we're going to talk about today. You want to explain kind of, uh, you know, where, where you found this article and kind of may, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll get into, you know, it talks about in this article, the top 10 reasons uh, why work is valuable and kind of, you know, we'll dive into that conversation. Yeah, so this is an article. Um, <clears throat> it was written... Uh, by a gentleman who's only like 29 years old. So yeah. I kind of got a kick out of that. <laughs> um, and I believe his name is Matt Raglan. Raglan Matt yeah. Raglan. And he's 29, and he's writing an article about um, the value of work. Mm. And, you know, I thought it was first pretty cool that a 29-year-old, so mm. we're talking about the generation yeah. that you and I are just talking about, like how he is coming to grips with, hey, you know, I, I need to get this right. Mm -hmm. I need to make sure I put some thought into this. And so he has gone through and created, and I don't, we're not going to try to do a, a word for word on this, but I think there's good prompts in here. The idea here of wh why, why is it important to learn responsibility? Mm. So one of the first things that he talks about is it was important that I, I learned responsibility. And well, what does responsibility mean? Mm. You know, responsibility means you are holding um, the value of something or somebody else. Yeah, You're taking care of a kid. You're taking care of other people, your wife, whatever. And if I don't have to take care of other people and I only have to take care of me, I have very limited responsibility. Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah, it does. You know, th this idea of, of responsibility, Merle, this is something that uh, um, in my world in the fire service, this is something we talk a lot about because, um, you know, we every day we show up to work, we have we have daily house duties that need to get done. Just ba mm. basic chores that you would do in your normal house. Again, this is my firehouse. I spent a third of my <coughs> life there. So it's our responsibility to, to kind of make sure the house is put in order. Uh, and we talk a lot about 
the the small details, i.e., changing the toilet paper, you know, j changing the 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 what, whatever the napkins in the kitchen. And, and we talk a lot about how when our captain, when our our house officer comes and says, "Hey, did you guys get that done?" and we say, "Yeah," even say, say maybe we half-assed it, right? We mm -hmm. we didn't do it to completion, right? Then when the big task comes, so we're on a working fire, and the captain approached me and said, "Hey, did you actually search that room?" Mm. He knows because of the history that I, I have actually taken the I've taken the responsibility of making sure the small details, the changing the toilet paper, changing the paper towels, making sure the coffee filters are put away, so on and so forth. There's small task. Then when it comes to the big task he knows he can actually trust what I'm saying. So I think this idea of work, taking responsibility, man, I think starts with the small details, mm. the, 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 the minor stuff, showing to work up on time. Man, for some people that, that maybe, that, to me, that's a big deal. That, you know, the, the small things like showing up work on time, showing up work ready to work with the attitude of ready to, to work. You know, if, you're, if your work requires you to do a small task, Man, do those because those are building habits, that responsibility. Man, if nothing else, you're going to teach your kids that the, the responsibility of waking up every day and going to work is meaningful. There's purpose behind that. And I, I just think, you know, it, it's a great place to start with the, the idea of trying to find value in our work, that, that work is going to, you know, teach us that responsibility. Mm -hmm. I'd love to disagree with you because uh, it would make me feel less guilty. <laughs> <laughs> but but you're right. The idea here, I remember being younger, and especially when my dad would jump my case about doing some kind of half-ass work. Yeah. You know, I mean, dad, it's, it's like, it's just raking the leaves, you yeah. know, like, and uh, he'd be like, do you really want to yeah. do it again? Yeah. You know, do you have that much time that you're ready to do it again? Yeah. But I, back in those days, I did not think about what it was doing to my relationship with him, mm. the trust building. Yeah. If I asked you to do it and you did it right the first time, think about the trust that was just established between the two of you mm. versus if I had to tell you two or three times. Yep. And now I was like, well, I, I don't really trust that you're going to do it. So I have to check up on you. Yeah. And that's on me. Right. Yeah. And so, I, yeah, I was not a kid who quickly learned that, you know, it was one of those things that was like, uh, I think you're overreacting. <laughs> I think it's just a bunch of leaves, dad. Yep. But you're exactly right. It's the responsibility. And I think at the core of that, the demonstration that you can be trusted. Yeah. Yep, I like it. Yeah, this next one, man. I think it, it, when we talk about finding value, man, and pointing it back to God, I think this is a huge one. Man, work develops relationships. Mm. Man, the relationships that I have with the guys that I spend every third day with, man, I can't tell you how strong that bond is. Um, you know, I'm sure people that have been in the military, people that are police officers, they, they can they can attest to this idea that, you know, well, heck, you and Linda, I'm sure you guys have a crazy mm. bond, right? On top of being married, mm. you spend every day together, you know, working on, on your ministry that you're doing. Man, the, the ability to develop and, and, and have relationships with your coworkers, man, as a believer in Christ, there is so much value in that because because when you when you take that that the, the true value of that, you realize that that relationship is bigger than just in the fire service, right? Mm. Because I, I show up every third day with the same guys. Man, my relationship that I have with those guys is bigger than any fire service. It's bigger than any fire we've ever gone on. Mm. Man, it's so much bigger than that. You know, where we, we I want to know about the guys I work with. I want to know about their family, about their relationship with their wife, how they're doing as a man, right? And, and I think this idea, if you really want to start, kind of take a step back and and begin to try and find that value in your work. What a great place to start with the people, your coworkers. Yeah, I think it's fantastic because you know the when you uh, can't get along with people, you're going to quickly find yourself on an island in life. Mm. And if you just keep doing that as life goes on, you'll eventually dwindle down all of your your friend base or your support system. You know, you mentioned Linda and I working together. Well, we were married uh, 31 years before we started Rock Solid Families. And, and we uh, thought we had a pretty solid marriage. Obviously, that's what allowed yeah. us to start <laughs> the Rock Solid Families. But when we started working together, it was a whole different level of being put into the soup, you know, mm. in, into the boiling water because you we had to quickly figure out tension between us like mm. when something like just like you if like if there's a fire and you and another guy disagree on you you don't have time to sit there and argue and bicker yeah. about who says this is the right way to climb a ladder right like right. the house is burning you you, yep. you want to get on it and the same thing lynn and i found like we were start, starting to have tension between the two of us within our work our ministry 
and we we had to go home with it. We had to yeah. be at the office with it, and uh, it made us double down. And I think our marriage is even better today than it was five years ago, but it wasn't easier. Mm. I mean, we, we had to go through some refining there of, all right, this is this is really not working well. So yeah, yeah it forced us into an even better relationship. For sure. Yeah, this, this next point that work produces endurance, I think is spot on, man. Um, you know, as, as a long distance runner, when I was in high school, um, I remember thinking this all the time that, that, you know, the beginning of the season for us, man, <laughs> three three point one miles seemed like a long way to go, right? Mm-hmm. And by the end of the season, I'm like, golly, we're putting five, six, seven, eight mile practices in. That yeah. three miles doesn't seem that hard. And I think this is exactly what what you know this author is talking about. This idea that as you go through you know your work, man, the trials and tribulations that you're going to go through, especially if you're doing with other people, man, mm-hmm. those are that when, when when I'm when I'm at work and we're in the midst of of of, of a, a, a fire and things aren't going good. Yeah. To go back to the drawing board, to go back to the kitchen table and sit and be like, hey, man next time we do this and then two days later we get to try it out and we get to yeah. figure out if, if what we're doing is actually going to produce something man that to me that's when, when you have that conflict when you have a little bit of friction whether it be with a person or whether it be with actually the work you're doing the ability to to kind of dig your heels in right and you know i'm sure your generation you just say you know buckle up your bootstraps right <laughs> and like let's go to work i think that the ability to have that endurance to realize that work is not just for the paycheck i'm going to get in two mm. weeks right work is the, this long career of actually developing my skills and redefining my skills and making sure i am the best person i can be for that job yeah yeah perseverance i love the idea of getting mentally tough mm. to get through the more difficult day or time or task you know just yeah this kind of sucks where i'm at right now you know, put your head down and go. And I, you say my generation, I, I think my generation was one of the first generations that really started to find shortcuts into comfort mm. because we did start to get exposed to, well, the computer can do that for me. Well, you know, I can sit a little bit longer. And I think we um, had a taste of hard work, but a taste of the comfort. And we have thrown away the, the value of the hard work. Mm. I actually see... Uh, you guys now, those especially guys your age and younger who do have the capability of work and desire, you guys are rising to the top quickly yeah. because you're showing up. Yeah. Like you, you already know how to get through a headache or a tough day. And so I, I think <laughs> I just was talking to some of these guys out here doing concrete. I'm like, you guys, there were a couple young guys there. If you want to work, you can make some major money. You can own your own company mm. in a matter of no time yeah. if you want to show up mm. because you, you're learning right here how to get through the headaches yeah. and there's no competition. Yeah. 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 You know, I think there's um, the next point on here. This used to drive me crazy in schools, self-esteem. Mm. Um, you know, the, the, there was a big push for years about parents giving their kids self-esteem and teachers giving kids self-esteem. And it, it never even made sense at the time. To me, it was a, you know, it, it's it's good to praise and encourage and give words of affirmation, but you don't give people self-esteem. If, if I tell you you're good at something when in fact you're not, I'm a liar. Yeah. And I set you up for greater failure. Mm. And and so the only way you actually get self-esteem is actually by doing the work, mm-hmm. by proving to yourself that you are capable and worthy and valuable in a particular task. Mm. And so self-esteem, it, it can be taken away from people. You know, I can look at you and I can beat you down. Yeah. But but I can't artificially build you up because it's kind of like in sports. The reason there's a scoreboard doesn't lie, mm-hmm. right? And at the end of the day, it's going to be what you produced. Yeah. And self-esteem is well, what am I putting out there? Mm. So I think it's really important that um, that we recognize work or our output, our productivity, is something that gives us our self-esteem, yeah. not not other people's praises. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, it, just real quick on that, Merle. The, the one thing that I that I have found, um, and again, I'm just using my experience as kind of you know my talking point here. Um, I would say when you fail at something, dig mm. into that even more because the the self esteem you're going to develop from that if you if you you know continue to try it right. So when you mess up, so I, I know when I got put onto a ladder truck, 
throwing ground ladders was a huge hurdle for me oh, yeah. because I'm a small yeah. guy, right? And, and if I were just to throw my hands up and say, well, I just won't do that, right? That, that I'll, I'll leave that for someone else. Man, the, the, then it then my, just like we were saying, your, your self-esteem is lower then, but because mm. I dug that in and I realized that's a huge part of my job, I need to make sure I'm proficient at this. Yeah. I dug in that and now my self-esteem, my, my, my you know comprehension of what, what it comes to ground ladders is so sky high. Yeah, yeah, which is, then your self-esteem, yep. right? Like, no, well, you, you can't take that away from me. I know what I know. Yep. And I yep. know what I can do. Yep. Let, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. Work provides money, financial resources. Yep. Okay. So, uh, you know, we, we can't talk about the idea of um, money is not important. You know, it's overrated. No, uh, like it totally is something we need yep. and there's great value in it because it allows for lots of other things. It allows for freedom. It allows for new opportunities. Yep. And so the idea here that money can give you money, or I'm sorry, <laughs> work can give <laughs> you money is, is a very important thing to realize. Yep. Um, but I also think that we have to attach to it like, well, the inflation rate of what the money says. Um, I look at what people are getting paid. As we record this right now, there are people, there are billboards hanging up in certain areas that are saying, you know, McDonald's and other fast food restaurants, 14, 15, 16. We saw a $20 an hour deal at a fast food restaurant mm -hmm. just over the weekend. Yep. And my wife and I were like, we're shutting down rock solid <laughs> families. We're going to go flip burgers, yep. you know? So, we can really kind of mess with people's heads by over inflating that. And then we start to put all of our value in, well, this is how good I am. I make this much money. Yeah. But just how the amount of money you make doesn't necessarily indicate how good you are. Yep. So I, you just have to be careful with the money part. Yep. Yeah. I, th I think that's good. Yeah. As we keep moving down that this idea that work offers kind of a daily impact, man, this is, this is big for me. This is, this is part of the reason why I feel that my job, um, I do have so much purpose and value in, in what I do is because I feel like every day there's at least an opportunity to mm -hmm. have an impact. And again, this goes back to that relationships. Um, even if those relationships are being on a run for, with somebody for 15 minutes mm -hmm. and I'll be the first to admit, I squander a lot of those opportunities mm. because I'm there to provide a, a I'm, I'm doing a job, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I think, man, if you have the ability to take a step back and realize that every person you come encounter with, you have the ability to make an impact on them, positive or negative, mm. right? And, and I think to actually take that to heart and realize that, man, again, bringing in the faith component back into the, the true value, <laughs> realizing that the impact that we can have on other people because because naturally most most occupations you get to encounter a lot of people mm -hmm. you, whether it be on the phone if you're making phone calls behind the desk whether that's actually face to face man your impact that you can have on another person is huge i want to take this farther because i think it's this goes back to understanding that we connect our work to god mm. because i think you know lynn and i um felt like rock solid families and starting this ministry was not just about making a marriage better today. It was about making uh, families <clears throat> better and generations to come, mm. kids' lives better, their marriages. <clears throat> getting excuse me. Up. I'm getting all messed up here. <laughs> making them better. And so when you connect it to God and you see that um, God works in a timeless frame, he works on an eternal uh, frame. The idea that now you, the impact you do has an eternal mm. impact. So you just serving somebody, helping somebody, encouraging somebody in your work, you know, you could change the course of their life. Mm. So good. <clears throat> yeah, man, th th this, this, uh, this next one that uh, this author was talking about is this idea that work challenges your comfort zone. Holy cow, I, this is spot on for me. This is, I can't tell you the number of times I've been so uncomfortable walking into someone's house asking them what I can do for them because they called 911. And man, I think, a, 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 again, bring the faith component. I think God wants us to be challenged in everything we're doing because comfort you know, it, it breeds mm -hmm. complacency, mm. right? And in our complacency, it breeds just the, this this lack of value that you're finding in your work. Man, I think in everything we do in our work, we should be pushing our comfort zone because everyone likes to sit in their nice little bubble, right? They mm -hmm. don't want to be challenged. They don't want someone to ask them questions. They don't want to, you know, be put in a dirty situation. Man, I just think that, again, going back to trying to find that value in your work, 
put yourself in positions where you're not comfortable. Because again, if you want to talk about building self-esteem, put yourself in a really uncomfortable situation. And then yes, go back to the drawing board to be like, all right, next time I'm going to be a little bit more comfortable because I've already done this, you know, building that experience. I think the only way to really truly build experience is to put yourself in situations that you're not used to. You yeah. have, I mean, that's the mm -hmm. only way to truly build, you know, that, that, that comfort. Yeah. Write this down, write this down. All right. I use this all the time. Okay. I need, I need a pen. Especially with my young guys. Uh, the most dangerous water you can paddle in is calm water. Mm. The most dangerous water that you can paddle in is calm water. And the reason is because you become complacent. If you're constantly out on a flat water lake and there's no breeze and you just, you, you think you're great. You think you're awesome. Look how much headway I make. Look how fast I go. And occasionally we need, we need a little bit of stormy water. Mm. Now, nobody likes hurricanes. So right. let, let's be real. Okay. But the idea of if the first time water gets a little choppy, I flip my boat mm. because I've not practiced my skills of keeping it upright because I'm always in flat water. I'm not very good at what I do. Yeah. Okay. And so having the ability to get through, you know, one of the things that we talk about in the special forces group that we're familiar with is uh, they have to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Mm hmm. And when you, you talk to those guys and they're going through BUDS training and Hell Week and all that, and they are freezing cold as they're wet and sandy out on the water, and they're just like, they, you learn real quick that you just, you embrace the embrace suck. suck, yep. <laughs> you embrace the suck and say, yeah, this is so good. I feel miserable <laughs> right now. And it, it's only because you've got to mentally know how to get mm. through your discomfort. Yep. Man, that's that's so good. Uh, you know, it, it, this next one, Merle. Uh, man, this is this is this is a tough one to really. Um, I think whether it be whether it be man. a pride issue, whatever it looks like. But man, to truly find the value in your work, you need to realize that work is not about you. Mm. This is a tough one. This is. I'll be with the first to admit this one is a tough one for me um, because. I feel like at where I'm at in my career, man, I, I am trying to change the environment that I'm around and I'm trying to change the firehouse that I'm in and trying to incorporate different things of the guys that I, I want to see on the fire ground, right? Mm. As a quote unquote, you know, <clears throat> leader, not leader, right? I don't have the cool title of a lieutenant or a captain mm -hmm. on, on my fire department. I'm just, a, I'm just a fireman. I'm an everyday fireman, right? And I lose the fact that, man, it is not about me. It's not about mm -hmm. what Kyle Crawford wants in the firehouse. It's not about, you know, my, again, you want to talk about not, it's not about you. Go back to the last point that, that you, if, if, because if you think it's about you, you are way too comfortable. Mm -hmm. You are way too comfortable in your position. You kind of hit this plateau, right? Man, I just think this idea to realize that work is not about you. There's bigger purpose behind why you have to show up to work than just because, hey, Kyle Crawford's here now. Everything's fine. Yeah. Well, it's it's such a mentality that has been really um, promoted for so many years. You know, I this frustrates me all the time, and I know I'm just being naive. Uh, but when you see uh, an athlete that's a pro athlete that's on a great team, and they're winning Super Bowls or World Series or whatever they're winning, and their contract is up, mm. and then all of a sudden they – they are worth, you know, X number of millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. um, and they could stay on this team and keep this team together, keep the nucleus together and keep the winning going as a team. Mm -hmm. Or they could say, well, you know what? This is what I'm worth. Yep. And I'm going to go out and shop myself around. And, and so I, I think it is detrimental because not just does it hurt the team, but all of those who are watching get the same mentality. Well, what's in it for me, mm -hmm. you know? And so when you hear people say, well, I just don't care about anything other than winning the, the uh, you know, the Super Bowl or whatever, it's like, well, if that's the case, then you'd be willing to say, you know what, I'll, I'll take a million less, but I want to keep this, this group together because, man, we're like brothers yeah. here. We're like mm -hmm. brothers. And it's very rare anymore that you see that. Yeah. Guys, contracts come to expire, and they're like, you know what, I got to look after me and my family. And they yeah. always throw their family in there. And yeah. It's like, they're, it's like no, you're looking after yeah. you. So I, I just we just have to be careful. It's not that you can't, you aren't an important part of the, the formula, but it can't be simply about you. Mm. 
Yep, I like it. You know, th- th- this uh, this next idea, this, this idea that that work improves society, <laughs> man. That uh, may- maybe that's the the obvious one, right? That's a big duh. It it, it, it <laughs> is because I mean, the more people we have working, the better our society looks, and the better our society functions and and operates, and, and is all very true. And this is th- this going back to the last point that work is not about you, right? Mm-hmm. This idea that that man, if you want to improve your community. If you want to improve the, your your family and the people, your relationships you have, man, all that is a, it's a domino effect. That that if you lose sight of the fact that it's not, if you think it's all about you and who screw the society, screw what everyone else is thinking, mm-hmm. whatever else is doing, man, when, when you lose sight of that, the domino starts to fall, and then I think that's where you you begin to truly lose that value in what you're doing. But if you realize that, man, when I show up to work every day, and, and so do the other guys that I'm working with, the other people I'm working with, collectively a, a, as a group of employees, when we show up to work, we are improving our community yeah the whole i mean we we say it's a big duh factor but it's not in today's culture the idea that people will um um (laughs) i love when we have protesters out in the middle of the day and we're (laughs) like how how's that guy do that doesn't he have a job don't you have to work work?" and it's like there's a number of people out there Mm. that think that their quality that they add to the world is um them going out and protesting and uh versus just carrying a day-to-day job Mm. and i so i I think um it there is an important factor here because the day-to-day work says that you're taking care of other things other responsibilities versus just yourself All right, so the next thing is just talking about, hey, do you want to be a slave to somebody else or do you want to have some independence? Mm. And and the only way that we really get a level of independence, we're never going to be truly 100% independent because we are in a interdependent um, function here as humans working with other humans. But the idea of me not being a slave to another person is, is freed up when I know how to work. Mm. When I know how that I don't have to be dependent on somebody else keeping me around, that I could go out and make my own way. And my son is getting ready to, um, he's looking to get a little winter job. And uh, he's like, well, I don't really know what I'm, what I could do. You know, like I'm, he's, it's a, it's, it's a winter kind of job. And they take kids who are underage, you know, they can be 14, 15. And I said, everyone's in the same boat, dude. None of you guys have gone to school for anything that you're getting ready to do. I said, you know, I was told very early that your first jobs when you're a kid and you haven't developed any particular skill yet, the biggest thing that you need to have in your mind is nobody here will outwork me. Mm. And I remember that bailing hay. I remember that bailing hay, the first year I was brought out onto this crew, and these guys were all older high school guys, and here I am, a scrawny little freshman. I mean, I wasn't the biggest guy, but nobody outworked me. Yep. I mean, they could lift a bigger bale of hay, maybe, yep. but I was putting it down. You and, know what we call that at work? We call that the junk- buster. <laughs> <laughs> we call it the junkyard dog. Yeah. We want to be known as the, the junkyard dogs of a fire scene. Like yeah. if, if there's a task that needs to be done, we're there. We're the ones doing it. Yeah. We want to be the first ones that say, hey, Chief, what, what else needs to be done? We want to be the first ones in line, the last one to leave for the day. We, yeah. we want to be the junkyard dog. Yeah, yeah, and I think that just getting that in there, like that starts to create a value in yourself, even mm-hmm. as a kid. Like I knew I wasn't like the best, but I knew that, hey, Nobody can take away how hard I work. Mm. And uh, and that was the thing that just uh, it always stuck with me. No matter what job I did, it was like, yep, you're going to learn to work hard here. So. I like it. So, so yeah, as we kind of wrap this up again, ch- just going through different ways to hopefully find the, the value in work. Before we do, you know, kind of wrap this show up, Merle, I have one, one question for you. So this, this is a, a, a tough one here. So, so obviously, you know, we're talking about hopefully finding that value in a work. Merle, what happens if we don't feel that our business, our company values us? Mm. Because that's a real thing. That's, I mean, I'm sure if you were to list a, a number of reasons why people are leaving work, it's because they don't feel valued from their employee. What, what would you say, you know, kind of a, a takeaway for us, kind of moving, moving forward, you mm-hmm. know, move, moving it past that? Well, first off, I, I think that there can be legitimacy in what you're saying. Yeah. Because, I mean, that would be foolish for us to think that everybody is valued by their companies. Very uh, true. We know we've all worked in situations where we're not much more than a number. You know, what, yeah. what are you doing for me, the company? kind of thing. And so I, th- I think the very first thing to clear up the, the elephant in the room is, well, first off, 
before you start looking at what the company is doing for you. What are you doing for the company, right? Let's mm. get a little John Kennedy esque here. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. You know, ask what, not what your country can do for you, but what you're going to do for the country. So, because th that's the elephant that you can control. Yes. And so I'm going to ask first, like, okay, like, are you busting it? Are you the first guy there, last guy to leave? Are mm. you the one who's out working? Are you the one doing your things? And if, if that is the case and you're, you're, it comes across, whether um, through evaluations, through paycheck, all these other things, that you are just not feeling recognized and value at the level that you believe is important, then the last thing that, that you're going to get from me allowing is complaining about it. Mm. All right. Okay, you've done what you need to do. You've, you've covered your bases. And, okay, this is just a way this organization is going to operate, all right? That They have their free will, too. Now it's your free will to go exercise it. Mm. And it's time to go out and look for jobs, yep. okay? And, you know, I've changed jobs in my life. Uh, I know you're, you're, we've had conversation with you. It's like at some point in time, sitting around and doing nothing but complaining is, is just not acceptable. Yeah, just and, perpetuation problem. Yeah. So anyway, I don't know if I answered that completely, yep, I like but it. it's, you have to do something. Yep. Good deal. Yeah. I, I hope, you know, that this hopefully sparks some good conversations, at least amongst yourself, you know, to, to try and figure this out, try and look, really evaluate if you're really finding value and purpose in your work. And if you're not, man, w what can you do to change? Because again, this is something I'm trying to, you know, wrestle through right now that the things that I can control and what we just talked about, some of the, some of these different points, man, these are some things that we can actually can control and man, going through and actually being honest with yourself, you know, actually saying, yes, I, I, I'm willing to, you know, it, the work is not about me. You know, they're, they're, it's about the relationships of people I'm working with. Again, going through those, those 10 little, little bullet points that we kind of drew from. So hopefully you guys got some good from that. All right. Very good. So, uh, guys, we need your help. We need your help in spreading the messages. And if you are uh, one of those guys who gets something out of what we try to put out, we want to thank you. Please give us a five star rating. It just helps boost up the search engines uh, as people go out there looking for for good stuff. Also, you know, share the show with uh, guys that you might think could get something out of them. So as we've talked about before, maybe this whole work thing was not your issue, but maybe you're with a guy who's struggling with a work situation or, or looking at different jobs. Hey, th this is a conversation that's worth having because I think we went through some priorities today of, well, w what do I really need to make sure my mind's right with first? So share these shows. Yep. And uh, also like if we could help you with any coaching or anything like that, reach out to us. Uh, you can call our office at Rock Solid Families at 812-576-7625 or you can go to the website at Rock Solid Families which is rocksolidfamilies.org so there you go let's get it done we I have like work it. to do brother we come got, on I, we got I, work to we, do we have a lot of work to yeah. do but yeah thanks so much for Quality Automarks and Casey Outdoor Solutions for coming alongside of us really do appreciate them you guys uh, have a good week and go out there and be a strong dad Casey's is a premier garden center and gift shop located in Largeburg, Indiana. Casey's offers a wide selection of plants, landscaping materials, home and garden decor, and gifts for every occasion. Casey's is committed to providing exceptional service, a unique shopping experience, and value to every customer. Stop in and see what makes Casey's so unique. Located at 21481 State Line Road, Lawrenceburg, Indiana, or call 812-537-3800. Let Casey's help you add beauty to your home.